right, and welcome to another episode of Honest to a Malt with myself, Duncan Tupids, and this week we've got a special guest for you, Graham Cool. Uh, Mike, what's the name of the episode today? Today is episode 35, and it's Too Cool for School. Yeah, welcome, Graham. Excellent, yeah. You're just picking up on that number as well, 35. That yeah. is the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society number for Glen Murray. So. Is right. it? Yeah. yeah, of course it is. There you go. go. Boogie. We actually organised that. It was pre-thought of. Um, yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Planned yeah. to perfection. Planned it. Your attention yeah, to detail it. is... is, is it's if, remarkable. Yeah. yeah. It is... Um, uh, is there going to be... There's no Dingle one through SMWS yet. No, think, no. No, I think we're a bit away from that. Unfortunately, Yeah. we don't make very much spirit. Uh, so every kind mm. of cask is precious and we can generally sell it to somebody else for more money than... SMWS would oh, okay. pay for it, so yeah. that seems fair we're enough. in that stage of our uh, development. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, there you go. No SMWS dingle, folks. You have to stick with your balcones and other ones. Yeah. Balcones. <laughs> Whatever they can get their hands on. Lots of um, Glen Elgin, I think. Yeah. What is it they usually have? Lots of SMWS. Scotia. Apart from in yeah, well, there, loads of Scotia. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> They used to have plenty of Glen Murray because they, they, they had, there was a point where McDonald and Muir owned Glen Murray, Glen Murray and SMWS. So right. by default, they, they had a lot. But uh, latterly, they, we didn't su- supply direct from Glen Murray to them. So, But I have seen some yeah. later Glen Murray appear. So they had source kept it kept a few. going. So mm. good. There's always like bottles that are sort of consistently there, really, mm. and you, they come up a lot, you know, where they've got loads of stock. So, Graham, it'd be really nice if you'd um, uh, introduce yourself for um, for our listeners and um, a bit about yourself and a bit about Dingle. <coughs> yeah, okay. I uh, well, you've, you've given my name away, so um... <laughs> yeah. People, people could just look you up, I guess. I mean, <laughs> yeah, they look. If, if, if you want to skip forward two minutes, just oh. Google Graham Cool. Yeah. yeah, it's C-O-U-L-L. Yeah. Look up the criminal register, you'll find out more. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, uh, obviously I was born at some point in my life and then moved on from... That's a good start. <laughs> some would say I haven't moved on very far, but uh, I progressed 50... I've survived 55 years from that point of being born. Um, and in that time, I've spent 29 of those years involved in whiskey, uh, starting life at Glenfinnich and Balvenie and Kinenvi, for those that uh, know, know Kinenvi. So that was with Liam Grant in Dufftown for 11 years and then moved across to Glen Murray, also in Speyside, for 14 years. So 25 years in, uh, then mm. uh, controversially to some, but really, uh, it was a nice decision to make. Uh, moved across to Ireland, to the west coast of Ireland, southwest, uh, in, to the county of Kerry, and moved across to Dingle Distillery, which is, is relatively young. We're, we're, we will hit 11 years old this year. So when I joined mm. Dingle, it was about uh, probably yeah, it was six, six years old at that time. So, yeah, it was an interesting yeah. pick up at that time. So basically, go where the Guinness tastes best. That was your life strategy, definitely. And 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 find a job in that area. And since then, all I all I've pretty yeah. much done is post photos of Guinness in yeah. bars and yeah. look at the domage on that. Yeah. Look at that. Uh, it's like a ball emerging from. It's like a it's like a creamy ball emerging yeah. from a glass. It definitely is better. Yeah. I don't know why or how, but it uh, definitely seems yeah. to taste better in the yeah. in its root yeah. or, or closer to its roots. Let's say. Yeah, Ding- I mean, Dingle seems to be picking up a real cult following at the moment. Like, you've got some real hardcore fans. Do you do you find people just sort of outside your house or just loitering outside the distillery, like trying to get you know signed pairs of shorts and other things? Or yeah, there's a bit of that goes on. You know, a bit of fanboy stuff. But uh, it's nice to have. You know, I, I've been fortunate. Yeah. Uh, and and you know, social media for for you know a lot of people dish it and dish Twitter and things like that. But I've especially through COVID times, picked up, you know, there was a big community there and we were all doing online taste things and just generally mm. talking to each other because we, we had nothing else to do. Uh, so that, that I think, uh, you know, built up, built up a bit of a following, which we're, 
we're continuing with, and obviously the, the whiskey releases are are coming through now. In the early days, we uh, there were some smaller batch releases, limited releases, which were yeah, we were the, they were what they were. They were they were young, but they they got the the Dingle whiskey out there. Dingle was the first yeah. distillery really uh, to come on stream in about a hundred years, so there was always a lot of interest in what Dingle were doing early on, but. With that, you always get your, you'll get your critics as well because you're you're, you're young. The only thing you can release is young. Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. And uh, you know you're doing your best. And, and, and it's always going to be more more new makey, isn't it? Yeah. It gets to sort of seven, you know, five, maybe seven years old. Yeah, I think six yeah. is a, is a great, almost the magic year to to get past. Once you get past there, you can you can compete with most on on taste and flavour, uh, especially if you're using. Mm-hmm. You know, decent decent casks to get the flavour in there. So, so now we're past that point. With you know, before people would have tasted Dingle and said, "Oh yeah, yeah, it's good, it's nice," but it, but they'd all said, "But it's still young." Uh, mm, we've, yeah. we've at least dropped those words at the end. So I feel like people just say that by all, just by default. Like there was that you know, sometimes you can't tell it's that young, even if even when it is occasionally. I'm not saying all, most of the time is probably right, but sometimes you can't tell really. You, know, you can tell it's not old, right? But you can't tell that it's. You couldn't tell the difference between five it's, years. It's and 10 far more years accepted often. now than it ever all was. The time, but sometimes. I think people that actually yeah. understand whiskey and know the whole sort of industry are now far more willing to uh, drop a few quid on something a little bit younger um, if it's done well. And that's yeah, yeah. And that's what, what it is. Yeah. But you know, you're you're trying to do your best. You, you with all or with most of the new Irish distilleries, they're all pretty small, all pretty. Uh, you know, we don't we don't have big backing, big funding behind us. So we're we're having to to tread carefully, and 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 obviously we need to you need to bring some money back in. I mean, you can't just yeah. you can't just walk into your warehouse every day and count the casks and say, well, that's wonderful. It's you know, well, a lovely sight, lovely smell. <laughs> what a collection! <laughs> yeah. yeah, at some point, this is great. Let's do this again tomorrow, lads. <laughs> yeah, they last they lasted six months. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Got to sell some stuff. At some point, yeah. you have to take the baby out into public and let them tell you yeah. whether your baby's beautiful or ugly or somewhere in between. So, no one ever says the baby's ugly, though, do they? I mean, no, that's but... outrageous. <laughs> no. Is this? Hang on, is this an analogy now, or does this actually happen with a real baby? Just yeah. checking. Have you been looking at pictures I've been posting yeah. of my new daughter? Uh, is this your? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I feel like I feel like this is a masked dig here. This is a swipe. <laughs> I have not stalked you that far to look at your screen. Graham's saying, look, you, you could have called her Dingle. You didn't. Yeah, you called so, her Isla instead. As far as I'm so, concerned, yeah. yeah. Well, there you go. That is what it is. <laughs> hey, we should, before we stray too further into uh, a chat, we, we keep chatting about this stuff, but we should do, obviously, what's in your glass, Graham. So, Graham, what is in your glass this week? Yeah, I'm doing a little bit of uh, promo. I don't know what, I'm holding it up to the screen. but oh, I'm right, staying on brand. <laughs> Nobody can see this as a radio. But you can take a picture of it, though. Yeah, well, this is our latest release, which uh, is uh, called Gira. It's part of a, a, a series of nine releases that we're doing over just over two and a bit years. And they're yeah. all different finishes. They're all single malt. And this one in particular is a Tony Port finish. So it was re- yeah. a, released just a couple of weeks ago, just in, just in the run-up for Christmas. Um it's a big Gira. anything in port is a t- is a big yes from me. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, it's probably the safest bet within the, within the nine releases. There's some finishes there that that you know I would have had more more of a worry about them being or how well they'd be accepted. But you generally can't go too far and wrong with a yeah a port finish. And and our mm. our last release in our in our small batch releases. Which were all called yeah. batches. Batch six was a full maturation port. And that was a couple of years ago now, and that, that went down very well. Yeah. Uh, so, I, so I knew I was kind of I was on safe territory going down. So, this. is that going to be a series you're continuing on with, and that's yeah, going to be your like this, experimental arm? This one's number four of nine. So, uh, we'd, we've had a muscatel finish, uh, a rye finish, uh, an Australian. Uh, Shiraz finish and then the one before this was probably the least sexy of them all in terms of how you describe it. It was a double bourbon finish but it it, it, it worked very well. It was very well received. I've, like, I've, I've gone, I've lost anything I had. It's all gone now. Like, it just <laughs> all that. <laughs> Next time I need to, uh, you know, 
I'll just think double bourbon and I'll be, yeah. yeah. That would be your thing, would it? <laughs> no, like you said, the least sexy. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, if it was, yeah. could be sexier. I'm just saying, if you're at a swimming pool and you know it's all gone wrong, double bourbon. Yeah, double bourbon. You're safe again, right? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> double bourbon, budgie smugglers. It's code, yeah. code word, yeah. Yeah, I can't, what's wrong with double bourbon? I don't. Seems... Well, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But you know how yeah. people beat their chest. They all get. They, they all. They do. They want the fancy cask. They want either the fancy cask or the full on cherries or the full on sherry. They want their PXs yeah. and Oloroso. Yeah. Palos. Yeah, I do get excited, excited by um, just when it's like just sherry. Uh, it depends. I get more excited about the size of the cask. I think sometimes <laughs> than the. Than the type, I think. There's a line there. That's my, it's nothing that's to my do with nerdy, the size, Duncan. It's what you do with the wood. That's my nerdy <laughs> take on that. Sometimes it's the size of the cask that matters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so this is—is is this release coming out of Christmas or what's the what's the deal? It's or is it already? Uh, so Gira is, is is obviously an Irish term, and it's it relates to the the winter solstice. So, uh, okay. the nine releases are all all different. Today different festivals within or different points within the Irish calendar. Okay. So in theory, it, it, it should have been released in December, late December, but we weren't going to sell many <laughs> bottles at that time. So <laughs> yeah, it's too late, isn't it? To yeah. out then. missed yeah. the boat there. So, yeah. so yeah, absolutely. put it a little early and uh, so it can be in people's stockings for, for Christmas if they, if they want it. Yeah. The bottles look classy, I think, as well. A lot of the uh, the latest releases. That's that would be my. Um, there was you mentioned that one. There was uh, I'm going to say it wrong, but is it La Le Bride? There was Sam Hain. Yeah. Sam Hain. Yeah. How do you say it? Yeah, you're going to say them all. Is that right? Yeah. 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 No, I don't know all of them. <laughs> I mean, um, but I've I've tried. Yeah. Well, I'm listing the ones I've tried. Right. Uh, so and, Mi- so- mis- mispronouncing is our thing. That's what it's we do our best. Thing. We're on, yeah. And it's like we said, Glenn Murray. I can't say it now without saying Glenn Murray because I took the piss once and it's now we just say, Now we just say it. We say Glenn Murray in my it. head. Just to be, yeah. So, but the thing with the problem with Dingo is you can't say it wrong. I mean, how yeah, do you say true. that wrong? No. Yeah. D- so, Dingle? Yeah. Dingle. <laughs> the Engel. You could change it Dingy. to Dingo, I suppose. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I digress. So what's what's been? Um, do you have a favourite from the? Um, how far along are you in these nine seasons? Four, 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 four. And, four. Uh, and have you got a favourite one so I far? Go. Um, <laughs> going back to the least sexy one, probably the, the double, oh the double burbs Luna stuff. Yeah, uh, it was called. Cool. You should have called it double burbs. Double yeah. B, yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, that, 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 I think I just that was it. So if, if I'm a great fan of bourbon matured whiskey, it's it's kind of my my go-to um if 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 i had to my arm twisted and it was the only thing left in the world uh, that's the style of whiskey i probably would choose i think um so i i just think the flavors were 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 lovely on that nice balance you know all the usual bourbon character that you get there yeah and very easy drinking as well um we bottle these are bottled at just above 50 percent so they're they're just on the probably the the upper edge of where you want to be uh, at yeah. this age, anyway, to, to drink without yeah. getting too much of it. I think that's probably that just just shy of fifty percent is kind of like the sort of ideal ABV. Really, yeah. keeps keeps the um, the hardcore whiskey drinkers happy ish, and uh, shows people that aren't haven't drunk as much whiskey what whiskey can really be, how how yeah. much fuller it can be, right? Yeah, it's like the and safe you- word of the whiskey world. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and you, and you don't have to fiddle about with water too much at that stage. You know, you, you, once you go above that, it's, it gets a bit tricky with with how much water. It's funny you should say that eh? because if, if, um, I, there's this Highland Park that everyone's been getting from Master and Malt, and they've sold like 400 bottles in you know yeah. like a day, a couple of days or something. It's single cast for about 70 quid. Um, PX refill. It's a PX, It looks like a refill to me. So you get a hint of black currant in it, a lot of vanilla, lots of other things like honey and treacle. But if you add water to it, I mean, even like a, even if there's water in the same room as it, it goes totally vegetal and spicy. Oh, really? <laughs> you write it off, yeah. And it's so bizarre. And that's happened to me with other Highland Parks before. It just, uh, yeah, even a hint of water and the whiskey completely changes on its, uh, you know. And so, you know, water isn't always a positive thing is what I was going to say. So if you can get the ABV right for drinking it, 
and doesn't need water, that's probably ideal. I think it's a much more enjoyable experience for most. You know, most whiskey drinkers do not do what we or what we do with whiskey. <laughs> they put it in the glass, yeah. they sit down, <laughs> drink and it. drink it. And say, oh, you're speaking to Tumblr Club here, actually, yeah. Graham. So uh, yeah, we, you're, you're, we tread. We've got a foot in both camp. We've got a foot yeah. firmly in the uh, the lazy whiskey camp and a, yeah. a foot in the, the nerdier whiskey camp. I think. And I think the sign of a good whiskey as well is one that you, you you actually want to have a second glass of. And you know, some whiskies out there, they may be brilliant whiskies, but they're, they're uh, there's maybe just something about them that you think, oh no, okay, one one was lovely, but <laughs> I want something yeah. a, bit, a bit more refreshing now. You. Know? Mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, so uh, we usually do what's been in your glass. So thanks for sharing this. And also, um, what is anything been up your arse? Is anything annoying you this week? <laughs> Are you, it's fine. You seem like a very positive person, so it's okay yeah. to say. I'm yeah. usually a beacon, a beacon of positivity, and Duncan then has suddenly turned into like the Grinch. The Grinch. So it doesn't yeah. have to be bad. It can be good. This is just... coming for Christmas. Yeah. yeah. Jim Round Whiskey Show, a clean cans in our hands, a hope to stands we go, a think was one is ram, dram, 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 where's my lanyard gone? And Mike, did you take it? Now I've got only one spare hand to hold my bag of cribs, so oh, dingle of bells, dingle of bells, dingle marginally, oh it was close between the two, if you believe that I've got it to sell you, hey, dingle of bells, dingle of bells, a dingle marginally, it was close between the two, if you believe that I've got a bridge to sell you. Yeah, no, I nothing. I don't think. Yeah, no. Sometimes I get I get niggled about things, but it's usually just old man ranting that I do. You know, and there's really no rhyme or reason. Uh, yeah, but like you can't find your slippers or something. Yeah, like yeah. You're wound up by somebody on TV, and you start shouting at them because they, right, because you know they well. You think they can hear you. Uh, <laughs> No, I had a good weekend. So I didn't. I wasn't forced to watch too much rubbish on TV. Yeah, but we were out on Saturday night, so I dodged Strictly Come Dancing. Always uh, a bonus. Successful. And all yeah. that stuff because that kind of any yeah, you're starting to get me wound up now. But any program that can be watched, <laughs> he's, in five... he's winding himself up now. <laughs> he's gone Strictly. He's gone. Oh God. Oh. You. <laughs> oh. You know. If you if you think about how much time if you if you watched every episode of Strictly ever. Yeah. Just casually to keep your other half happy, and then you added that all up. Yeah. Oof, that would be a lot of time, right? It's like if you think about a commitment to any TV show. If you don't like it, say you watch the whole of Sopranos and you didn't like it, that'd be like sixty, seventy, eight hours of TV. That's a lot of time. Yeah, you right? could have, exactly think of the things you could have been doing. Like you, you've wasted Instead, all that time. You could have been sat on your ass watching a different program, doing different exactly program, the exactly. <laughs> And just, just think as well, how quickly could you watch Strictly on Fast Forward? You would watch it in 10% of the time. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it when you're not watching live TV and you can just skip through it. I watch um, the last series of Rap Game and um, I I can't be bothered to watch all of them. I just I just fast forward it to the raps yeah. and watch it and then fast forward it to the next rap and then I'll maybe watch like the summary at the end and I can get it all into like 15 minutes. That's terrible, isn't it? Yeah. They I mean, spent all that effort and time creating that content, but... You know, you just fast forward. It's like people listening yeah. to our podcast. They just skip it. <laughs> they fast forward. Yeah. <laughs> they actually slow it down to half speed just so yeah. they can enjoy it more. That's right. <laughs> so, all right. So, so TV mostly. All right. <laughs> Mike, what's what's been in your glass then? So, Go on and gloat. Well, no, I'll, I'll, I might come back to what's what's new in my glass later. What's currently in the glass mm. is uh, just hold it up to the camera. Ooh. Is oh, yeah. the Rye cask finish, nice. which I believe was your last bottling, wasn't it? Your last little uh, experiment. Oh, yeah. I, okay, I pushed it out quick on the on the bottle you're on before I left. I think it was it's 62 the sixty-two percent or something. Sixty-two point nine percent. Sixty-two point nine, and I think it was a Knob Creek I wanted, Rye. I wanted to see people's reactions because it was the first time I'd used rye casks uh, for for a finish back then, um, and. Uh, so yeah, kind of pushed that one through quickly, and then obviously the the second release in this series of Dingles was a uh, was a rye cask um, Sagamore. Was it the, um, Sagamore. Sagamore rye, uh, the Lola Brida release, to the second one this year. Again, uh, yeah, it, it was well received. Yeah. The two 
the bourbon and rye cask go go well together there. I think sadly my bottle is a br- a, just about to approach the mark where. Oh no, you've got a few pours left before you get to a third. Yeah, left. Michael yeah. Henry has basically said that if you get to a third left, you've got to get rid of it because it'll go One bad. Month. So I, we take that as gospel now. It's yeah. great advice, and they have got a lot of open bottles. So yeah, yeah. means I can get through it. But I love this one. Um, yeah, I've been trying to nurse it for a while now, mm. just having a few drams. Do you add anything there, to but... it? Do you add water to that? No, no. Oof. We're going straight. It's it's a punchy, spicy beast. Yeah, um, nice. I love Knob Creek Rye. Like I adore Knob Creek Rye. So, yeah, I think that with the uh, the Glen Murray spirit just works so well. And yeah, yeah, like I said, hopefully you get the same sort of freedom and stuff at Dingle to do the same. It sounds like you are. So yeah, yeah I do. Long you will continue. Um, I inherited the, the warehouse pretty much the when I arrived. Um, forty percent of casks were sherry, forty percent were bourbon, and then the other twenty, well, maybe ten percent pour, and then ten percent were were other casks. So I, I've mm. maintained that theme, you know, because we're quite strong on sherry. Uh, I've kept that going, but always, you know, you're always it's a bit like an eighty twenty rule. You're, you generally can dabble around with twenty percent of what you're doing without really having any plan for where it's going. Whereas mm. 80%. As long as you like, get the 80%. Sounds like point. my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love to, um, I tried the port one a couple of times uh, once at a festival. Uh, one of the port ones, port, it was number five or number six or something. It was definitely port cask. Or maybe it was something you had under the counter. Yeah, but I definitely tried one, which was port yeah. finish or port cask. It was the was maturation banging. port. It, that was it. It. Probably, yeah. it was probably it was the one. It was the release that got us beyond this. You know, yeah, you're fine, but you're young. That one. That one pushed us into the, or gave, got us promotion into the, the league above. Yeah, Paul. Paul works well even at young ages. I think, doesn't it? Yeah, like yeah, a, and then probably yeah. full maturation for it. You don't need to be going. You don't need to be going beyond ten years to. 12 years, you know, we were, that was seven years old at that time. It was, it was ample. You know, you've got enough fruity character in there. You're not going to get much more. So, uh, yeah, it can be released fairly young. Yeah. yeah. So um, that's what's in your glass, Mike. What, has anything been up your, up your jacksy this week? Anything been annoying you? Very much so. And I'm assuming it's annoyed every mm-hmm. other person in the country. And that is Black Friday. Right. Um, fake, fake deals. Fake whiskey deals, people just sort of like mainly larger sort of suppliers like Amazon and stuff, just dropping prices down to what they charge anyway, (laughs) making out that it's a deal. But also any company whose website I've even looked at for four seconds seems to have emailed me on a 24 hour basis for the last two weeks. And I'm clearing (laughs) probably like 500 emails out of my account every day. I think what's probably more annoying is it's it's that it's not Black Friday. It's like Black Three Weeks of 2023. <laughs> yeah. It just goes on forever. Yeah. It's still going on now. So no, I thought it was over. And then I logged in this morning. First thing, email, Cyber Monday or whatever. I was like, oh, oh, right. oh why? Just, yeah. yeah, let's completely just baffling, frustrating. Yeah. Does and in, my head in, the middle of, in the middle of that, um, uh, Lot Loman dropped a bottle uh, without saying it was on offer just at 45 quid a decent price point which uh got hoovered up by many people boom look at that bad boy there it is it's opened it's poured i haven't even gone yeah. for a sniff yet you know what's but... gone what's what's wrong on the label there is they haven't put double burbs double they burbs sold, missing they would have already been completely sold out gone rather than um, just whatever it is you know yeah or nearly sold out yeah. Se- seven-year-old grain uh some special ye- secret yeast secret yeah. yeast yeah Fif- Fifty-eight point nine percent. I think it was forty-five quid. Yeah, bargain, bargain. bargain. Can't so beat that. That's a that's that's a genuine yeah. Black Friday bargain. But yeah, it just yeah. Happened except it wasn't actually. They didn't call it discounted. They just put it out at that price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So no, hopefully. So what I'm saying is, it, it, it can't Black Friday can't have been entirely up your uh, up your uh, Jacksy because um, you got that. Uh, yeah, it still is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> How about you? <laughs> what is in your glass and what's been up your ass? Well, first off, cheers to you guys, Flange or Flange, as we say these days. Nice to have you on, Graham. Yeah, um, I'm drinking uh, this Siren Bay, which is either it's it's a it's a secret Highland uh, oh. peated medicinal peated eighteen um, year old whiskey, 
So it can only be, because it's coastal as well, it can only be uh, Talisker or the Chig. It's one of the two. Um, for me, it tastes more Talisker, but, but someone probably tell me that's impossible. You know, uh, that's what's in my glass, yeah. How much was it? 55 of your English pounds, 18-year-old mixture between bourbons and sherry casks. It's obviously not single cask. It's some sort of batch, isn't it? Mm. And I, don't, <clears throat> I couldn't really find much information on it, but uh, it's decent. Got germaline on the nose, peat, smoke, plasters, cooked plums, digestive, old oak, polished cabinets, wet ropes. <laughs> it's good. Palette's kind of effervescent. Graham's oh, laughing at me. Mike's yeah. laughing at me. It's only a whiskey pod. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Tasting those are not accepted. <laughs> anyway, it it kind, it's kind of like, it's kind of sweet on the palate, like apple apple pie type thing with like kind of custard and cinnamon. That's got that kind of range, but, but effervescent, like slightly fizzy. Yeah. Mm. And then the finish is just long, really. And like it's long, bit of quite vanilla, peaty, and just goes on and on and on builds. 55 quid. Bargain. Would, uh, if you gave some to your dad, what would his tasting note be? Well, I don't know if he would say, usually it would be nice, but he doesn't really like peaty whiskey anymore. So uh, not, nice. Say, uh, not, you know, not nice. Not nice. Not nice. There we go. Officially, not nice. for something else. Yeah. <laughs> Duncan's dad. It's Stamped just review. 50... Not nice. <laughs> What's the ABV on it? It's 45.7%. So oh, there you go. See that? It's got, it's got a pretty label as well. It. Yeah. <laughs> Most important. I mean, well, I mean, usually if they've got a pretty labour on them, they charge more money. So true. I'm interested yeah. to hear uh, your dad's gone off peated whiskey because I, I could, I can go along with that a little. I, I certainly wouldn't be, I wouldn't grab a, a glass of peated whiskey as much as I would have done maybe ten years ago. I, yeah, there we, go. we can officially say Graham Cool also says it's not very nice. <laughs> Breaking news: <laughs> Graham Cool yeah. doesn't like peated whiskey. Anymore. Yeah, doesn't like siren. So it's horrible. My, so my dad used to drink red wine. Um, and he would only drink red wine. He's all, also he he hasn't eaten chicken in years because I think cause my mum just that's just he just gave up on chicken because my mum didn't cook it so well or something like that. You have to understand I'm a fully, I'm like your modern I cook clean do yeah. stuff right. My dad doesn't really cook. Oh, okay, much. but you know you know it is what it is. And so um, he his taste buds completely changed a few years ago, and he drinks what I only see him drinking white wine now. He wouldn't touch red wine, even though for years he claimed that white wine was pish, right? And now he doesn't really like Peter Whiskey anymore. And we, I grew up with him drinking Peter Whiskey, right? That's one of the reasons I'm into Peter Whiskey. So it's what's his ex- strange. what's his explanation? Just gone off it, or like oh, you said your mum didn't buy it something. one week and he only bought white, and then that was it. <laughs> I <don't>. Converted. <laughs> he, he is definitely capable of buying whiskey himself. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I don't know. It's just it's just not as not as into it anymore. He much rather have a like a a bourbon cask or a sherry cask or, yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Actually, he doesn't like too high ABV either. So anything over sort of 48% is not for him, really. There we go. So. I love it. <laughs> and what's been up your ass? Because um, it's going to be you. negative, isn't it? It's no, going to be it's negative. You. It's, it's you. me. It, I, was, I was actually having a great week until uh, I saw and, you gloating about until... your bottle of Springbank Powder Katada, yeah. Ah, it's just... Ah. It's just poor a little bit, Shuey. Yeah. But it's okay, Mike, because you're going to send me a sample. Aren't I you? am going to send you. If I don't drink it all tonight, I'll send you a sample. Yeah, <laughs> I've had I'm a few people contact for samples, so yeah, I'll be um, sharing a fair bit out by this, seemingly. Oh um, no! So um, I don't think nothing, nothing outrageous this week. I've just been doing, just been very busy, just been too busy, double busy, as they say, right? So just been too busy. That's been slightly annoying, but other than that, absolutely fine. Everything's been solvable. Any glimmers so, of positivity? Yeah. Christmas, of positivity. Christmas coming? Car car was low on oil, sorted it out. What, yourself? Something else, sorted it. Well, of course. I mean, the, the point is, oh, my wife's dad helped helped me to go and remove some radiators from the house, which was good. So the two of us, we had to get that done. Some Things are happening. Stuff is happening. Were you, so, yeah. were you stealing them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You yeah, scrapped we just, them. <laughs> yeah, we're stealing. That's what we do. Um, we... <laughs> We turn up like Jehovah's Witnesses and then, um, you know, don't leave. We, we draw the person out and someone else goes in and steals their rads. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 you can never have too many radiators. Just is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, very true. Yeah. Oh dear. If you were going to steal something, radiators would be the last thing because they're usually quite bulky and heavy. Yeah. Uh, and I don't we were just really value for radiators. No, I've not, I don't know. Be better we were just removing them so they can be replaced with better radiators, basically. Yeah. 
You're far better stealing the copper pipes and making a still in your house. Yeah. No, nothing more. Actually, the week's been better for whiskey. So there was that. There was that Highland Park that I talked about, which was tremendous. I got back into that 1991 space side from the Wine Society. That was decent too. Mm. So it's been a good week like that. Uh, it's just really busy in the run up to Christmas. That's all. <laughs> So, um, Graham, we um, are really keen to hear uh, a bit. Of, you're a bit of a legend when it comes to surveys, right? <laughs> online, the polls, the polls, right? <laughs> Would you? Are, are you going to claim that someone else or? No, no, no. It's all my own yeah. work. I don't, I don't think anybody else would want to claim that kind of content. So I've I've written you to to. To move into this as a segue, I've written you a limerick. You ready? Okay. Yeah. There is a young man named Graham Cool who pops up online with jokes and trolls. In short, he's a sight. His whiskey's all right. Our survey said he's king of the poles. Hey. Hey. <laughs> so they're really popular, <laughs> these polls. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And we would... like a certain number of people. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. really entertaining. They were born in COVID, and I don't know. I can't really remember why or how, but uh, usually they revolve around food or very simple decisions that, that I try and pick things that I know will certain people will get wound up about more than they should. So I mm. I feel it's a success. I don't go with the number of people who vote. It's more how much aggro I can create between people. <laughs> Ah, all right. And then I try and poke that fire all through the day, or just to just to keep them going. So that you know, there are angry, angry young people out there, or angry old people as well. Do you, do you have any favourites from the polls that you've uh, conducted over the last? You've few done years? so many. I've done so, yeah, and and thankfully, uh, Brian Malt Musings, Brian, uh, he collates them all on a spreadsheet because he's he, he <laughs> likes that kind of thing. So, yeah. I think he still does it. Yeah. Uh, I, right. I need to get a summary again, but no, I, they, they're all they're all different. I can't, I honestly can't remember them, and I probably have repeated many over yeah. a piece, or certainly their variations on a theme. Because it's always stuff like you're having like fish and chips, and yeah. you can only choose one condiment. Yeah, what, what that, condiment that's usually the one that gets gets people going. You know, and I think it was sausages in a roll, or a bat, or a softy, whatever you want to call it. You know what you right. putting in there? Red sauce, brown sauce. From the, yeah. I think that was the first one, and it probably got the most votes ever. So, uh, right. yeah, no, it's just it, it, I'm stuck with it now. It's the only content I generally put on Twitter, so I have to keep that going. I don't. But it made me it made me wonder though, you know, to to get to know the real the real Graham Cool. Do you actually have a favourite condiment? I yeah, it depends though. It depends where you know. I, if I had to, I if I had to only choose one condiment to live with for the rest of my life it'd be tomato ketchup right your, tra- your traditional condiment yeah. the sweet vinegar of the yeah. Uh, condiment world yeah because you can have that with your bacon roll your sausage roll you can have it with your fish and chips put it in a burger. Multi- multi-purpose I, I put it on cheese as well in a sandwich cheese and tomato sauce <laughs> yeah okay yeah yeah uh, See, I used to have I used to have corned beef and tomato sauce sandwiches. That's where I was going, corned beef and tomato sauce sandwiches are probably the king of the yeah. world. Yeah. Yes, I you thought know, it was a well mixed tomato ketchup with his egg. I think I don't think that would go down too well. No, I'm not a fan. Egg meal made with tomato ketchup. No. Yeah, my um, I was back in Wales this weekend with the family, and the wife came, and we had fish and chips on Friday. And uh, the look on her face when my family just pulled out loads and loads of tubs of curry sauce <laughs> and just poured <laughs> it all over takeaway chips. She was like, oh, that's brilliant. what is wrong with you? <laughs> it's like fish, chips, curry sauce. It's like, this is what you have. She's like, no, oh. no. She just couldn't get her head around it. And I was like, yeah. No, I'm with your wife on that one. No, that's really no. And chips and gravy. I don't get either. Really can't get that. That's oh, no, I've not had chips and gravy. Chips, chips and gravy with cheese on top, grated cheese. That's like, yeah, that's that's a standard snack after you've been to like watch Wales play in Cardiff. Straight down Chippy mm. Lane, chips gravy, brown your yeah, cheese on top. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> more so recently. I think, yeah, I also feel like another one you would do would be like, what's your 
like you can only have one chocolate bar for the for the rest of your life. That feels like the kind of survey question. Yeah, you would and, do or something and sometimes like that. That, you know, I'll, I'll pick like you've only got three things left in the cupboard, and it's or, yeah. and, you know, it's it's sandwich. What are you going to make? Uh, Nutella or something else, something you know, things that are people are either for or against, and <laughs> yeah. generally get a bit of. Yeah, you're just hoping that one grumpy bastard comes on and kicks off. <laughs> and, and, you're like, yes, yeah. start the fury. And I've got there's always plenty of those. Lining those up. as followers, so that, I, I've no doubt. But what's more worrying is I post it on a Saturday morning, usually between eight and nine. I'm not out of my bed, and you, I can always guarantee the first two or three people who will respond. So they're they're either very sad or they're. Well, no, they're just very sad. They're waiting. Yeah. For <laughs> you go. They're they're always. They're, I feel like they're more. They're usually more food related. I can't remember anything like you're walking down the path and you tread in dog's mess. Do you uh, continue to walk it off, yeah. uh, wipe it off with a leaf, or throw your trainer away and walk <laughs> walk in a sock and one sock and one shoe? It's usually food related. I feel like yeah. most of the time. But that's yeah. that's what my mind revolves around. Right? I, I don't really think too much about walking in dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> less popular i take yeah. it you don't have a dog then no 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 no, I don't. no. oh that'd be why then right i, yeah. I look uh, through my feet as well but that's not a bad one you might see that one appear so graham <laughs> uh we you often do pudding island drams with guests right yeah we can randomly come back to surveys would you like to have have would you like to do pudding island drams i can do yeah you can do mm -hmm. okay so you're going off to a uh a deserted island and you've got 30 days on this island right doesn't necessarily mean it's like you know life's a beach it could be anywhere as other guests have pointed out you could be in a survival situation but you get to choose one whiskey one album one pudding and then at the end one person to pick you up so it's like you're on your own and it's, you know, you're know you going to pick a, a whiskey, a pudding and an album that you really love. And then, you know, whoever it is you want to pick you up at the end of your 30 day uh, experience. OK. You you can cop out and say, Faye, if you want to, but we would judge you. <laughs> we haven't even got that far yet, have we? <laughs> <laughs> so if you yeah. could choose one whiskey, nothing else. 30 days stuck on an island could be anything doesn't have to be expensive can be ridiculously expensive can be your own can be something else anything at all mm. yeah I, the, the, probably quite a, quite a straightforward one for me that because i have one whiskey that kind of creates or featured in my life at different times and uh i think with whiskey it's all about memories and where you where you drank it who you shared it with and mm. uh, the one that comes to the floor for me is, is Scapa 16, old Scapa 16, which oh, yeah. um, we were on, went on holiday to Nice with friends a few years ago now, and it was still at the time, Scapa 16 was actually on sale in duty free, so we picked up a bottle, and it was probably only 30 quid at that time, uh, and we picked up something else, a peated, peated, giving lag of rule, and anyway, two bottles for the, for the week to share with my friends, so... Obviously, you opened both bottles on the first night, and we definitely veered towards the scapa. Probably too much because woke up the next day and there wasn't there was there wasn't even a third left in the bottle. It was it was well below the day. <laughs> uh, yeah. It was just just a lovely drinking whiskey and a, and a bit of history there. I think uh, uh, so. Enjoyed it then, and then uh, then we nipped across the border into Venta. Milia and found it again in a delicatessen um, and it was only worth out about 25 euros at that point so we bought took a couple of bottles home I wish I'd hired a van and taken a couple of pallets home and, and kept it but anyway uh, cracked you don't see many you don't see many people drinking Scapa really no. it's, it's uh... not even now you know I don't think much of the new stuff is anyway there also is new nor new releases now but um, you certainly couldn't. You certainly wouldn't be paying Scapa sixteen money now for for Scapa sixteen. You know, mm, it, yeah. it wouldn't be worth that. But um, enjoyed a, a bottle just uh, uh, with my brother just just uh, before my uh, mum passed away. We had a, it was my birthday. And we had a 
we cracked open a, a bottle there and the, all the family were together. So that was a <clears throat> you know a nice experience, albeit a sad time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that you know it, it's just it's just got special memories for me. Nice. Yeah. The whiskey and uh, and but it's it's a, it's a lovely drink. If you ever get a chance to have a a sample or anybody has one, yeah, worth worth a try just to, to try a little bit of history and just the old style whiskey. Yeah, keep, keep an eye they, on the old they, sides. Do they when did they stop bottling it then? Do we, do we know? Uh, oh, gee, well, Scapa shut, so you know that we were buying this and it was probably over age Scapa then. This would be 2015, 2014. Yeah, 2015 I'm, I'm, we bought it, so I'm pretty sure I have tried it between 2000 and 2010. Uh, like in that period, yeah. yeah. But again, yeah, but all down to the memories as well, you know. Oh, absolutely. But also, I wasn't always paying attention to what I was drinking back then. I just, I just, I wasn't, I wasn't doing and taking it seriously. So, yeah. So, Scapa Sixteen would be your uh, whiskey, and what about um, we say pudding or dessert? Yeah. What's your favourite um, pudding? If you could have anything every day, um, That's it. we don't have to have it every day, but I mean, it's available to you, right? I'll stretch your rules here because. Uh... Oh, easy there. You're yeah. going to go sausage roll. No, no. Well, I did. That's not a dessert, right? You know, call it a sausage pudding. But you're saying pudding or dessert, <laughs> and I would be going for a red pudding, which is uh, a delicacy in the northeast of Scotland from a chip shop. Ah. Red pudding supper. What's okay. that? With tomato ketchup. What's, what's a red pudding supper? I don't know what a red pudding is. It's it's kind of very solid sausage. <laughs> sausage. I don't, th- and also I think I'd choose it because I think it would dense sausage. It would probably last the thirty yeah. days without showing any signs of deterioration. <laughs> it doesn't need a fridge. So it's, it's basically <laughs> astronaut food, deep fried. Would... Is, yeah. is it one of those ones where you could you could have like uh, you could have like a centimeter every day, and that would be like two thousand calories? Yeah, and and, and your salt <laughs> yeah. intake for a week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so just that with a bit of tomato ketchup. Yeah. Love yeah. it. You just dip yeah, it literally, right. you know, and you'll be able to savour it. You can have it in batter or not batter either. So you can have it looking like a sausage or you can have it disguised. I'm, yeah. Is this in any way similar to sort of you sort of the dense looking Savaloys that you find in yes. chippies or? Yes. Yeah. Similar. Okay. So, so it's like, a, the yeah, I think I know what you mean. They're kind of like the, on the larger side. Yeah. It, right? But if you force me, if you force me to stick to your rules, I would go for a, uh, Baked Alaska, nice. Oh, controversial. Yeah. I love, but but overall, you're, what we're hearing here is you're more of a. Although to be fair, I was going to say savoury person, but ketchup's very sweet. Yeah, so I'm probably an uns- if you'd said just on its own, but it's the ketchup thing. You've still got a sweet too. Yeah, I, would, I don't go overboard in the ketchup. Though. I don't drown it, and I would never put it on top. I'd always put it to the side. Okay, you dip it in. Yeah, it. I like to. I like to approach the ketchup with the food, not yeah. not. Of the ketchup. Appro- appro- approach the ketchup with the food. Yeah, there's certain things you'll pick up more ketchup with than than others. You know, like your peas, you only want a little dash of ketchup with your peas. But, yeah, yeah. But a chip can take it, a bit more. <laughs> I, there, if there is there a book that exists already on how to uh, how to use ketchup properly? If there isn't, there Graham. Be. Yeah. I'm I'm hearing a lot of passion about this subject. Yeah, <laughs> Gra- yeah. Graham Cool on the on the correct use of ketchup. There's a, there's one. a lot of money Please. in kids literature. I feel like there's a kids book here that you you can make a fortune on this, mate. Yeah. I might give it a go. I might give. It- Have you ever tried to make your own ketchup? Uh, no, no. I feel like that's I feel like that'd be a journey for you. But, but <laughs> only if you even these posh ketchups. Yeah, I'm never I'm not as good like- as. But, you know, that's just that's like an East London thing, I think. Well, posh ketchup. I don't yeah, like ketchup. Oh, I'm just gonna make. I've made my own homemade ketchup for Tarquin. As before, yeah, no. <laughs> who's Tarquin? They're kids. He, oh right, idiot. okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was at something the other day, and a lot of people were dressed yeah. like they were from Shoreditch, no, and I'm like, got oh, got a on. medal for taking part in sports, but coming last. Tarquin, half, yeah, just... half the room were wearing uh, those. Um, beanie hat things you yeah. know like but not like to keep your head warm yeah just balanced on uh, top with a, balanced on top yeah with a with a hitler mustache but with an extra centimeter so it's not dodgy and then it's fine yeah <laughs> it's east fine. london brilliant yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah often dms yeah sort yeah. of skinny trousers baggy jumper yeah yeah um yeah. so um you'd have um the what's it called again not i called it red pudding dinner 
Red pudding dinner slash red pudding supper. Baked maybe Alaska. A, maybe a baked Alaska. And red what, pudding what supper. Your, red pudding supper. Yeah. What would be your um your album of choice then to listen to? Yeah, I had to think. I think about thought about this today because I you know, I have a diverse taste in music. Um, I am a bit of a an ABBA fan. Mamma Mia. But I don't think I'd like to listen to ABBA for 30 days on the trot. It's okay when you've had a few... It turned, it turned into Guantanamo Bay at that point. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, there is, I would need more than one bottle of Scapa to listen to ABBA. Yeah, just you in a dark room and ABBA on yeah. repeat. Uh, so there's a threshold you have to reach before you, you, you go there. Yeah. So I, I, the one that came to mind was um, Fleetwood Mac, Rumours. Oh, oh lovely choice. Yeah, because I think you could put this... with that every day. It's pretty mellow, but the, you know, there's bits you can blast out as well. Yeah, bit of everything, and it's it's got the snooker snooker breakdown in it. So yeah, it's, you know, it's got the dumb, isn't it? The F one breakdown in it. It's going to say F1, snooker. Yeah, F1. <laughs> snooker, yeah, F1. Be nuts on it. Nope. I can play it. I mean, it's easy. It's just a few notes, dumb. but I can't remember what it was from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Fleetwood Mac rumors. There's also loads of different versions of that um, that exist. So you obviously you go for the original, but you'd be yeah. sport for choice if you wanted to listen to cover versions of it as well. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it, yeah. I looked at it came out in 1977. So that's kind of when I started listening to music seriously. I was in the punk era and that kind of thing. So yeah. Were you a punk or you were just no, in the punk I, era? Just you know. I, I, I enjoyed some of the punk. I had the Buzzcocks. I bought the Buzzcocks record, uh, Never Fall in Love With. That was one of my first. Tune. And I bought yeah. Jimmy Jimmy, Undertones. It was green. Yeah, also also a classic band. Classic, yeah. Green vinyl yeah. as well. I wish I'd kept it. Probably worth money now, but like all those things you, you threw. You can't know those things at the time, can you? No. 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 You know. And, and if you are one of these people that kept everything, then you never enjoyed anything. You didn't know, yeah. no. Yeah, so I quite like my no regrets. Load of Scarpa sixteen and my uh, box <laughs> full of Jimmy Jimmy Undertones <laughs> as a, as a yeah. retirement. Uh, yeah, if you could go in a time ca- in a time machine, you go back and get them. I'd go back. Yeah, yeah. And, and that yeah, case just... would be full of McAllen's ready to offload. <laughs> yeah, do you know yeah. What I mean? yeah, that you, cask you from nineteen eighty they keep saying is now worth billions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they bought it for twenty pounds. <laughs> They tra- they traded it in for a uh, a red sausage supper or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> a bit of ketchup. Here's a cask. What is it? McAllen? Never heard of it. All right. I'm, okay. I'm now picturing Graham as like a sort of different version of Paddington Bear with a suitcase full of tomato ketchup just everywhere he goes. <laughs> just, just in case. <laughs> hey, we get you a big jacket, Graham, and you can just have yeah. bottles of ketchup inside it. And yeah. When people come up to you, you can just go, do you want some ketchup? <laughs> it's all that supermarket, Heinz. Aged, aged ketchup. Audi. Yeah. Order, all the good uh, ones. you need them all. I used to like Hellman's. Yeah. Didn't, I don't like it so much now. I think it's changed. It's gone too tomatoey. It's gone too. It's not sweet enough anymore. It's too, gone too proper. <laughs> they went artisanal, which on which reminds me. Back, um, so hang on. First off, who's going to pick you up from the island then, uh, hey. or wherever you're? Again, not to not to be too morose or sad, but you know, I, I lost my dad when I was twenty-one, so I quite like him to come and pick me up. And oh, that's lovely! And if he could do it, I think that's lovely. If he, if he could do it in a Renault Twelve or a Renault, as we used to call them, yeah, really. that would be great because that was our family car. And uh, oh, yeah. and imagine I'm on a desert island that's hot, so I'm going to climb into the back seat and burn my fucking legs off on yeah. the- <laughs> 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 They were they were like hot boxes, weren't they? Yeah. Oh, oh we had a Renault. We had a, a Renault Five, uh, one of the really sporty ones for a bit. So small, brilliant, brilliant GT yeah. Turbo. I don't know if it was a G, I can't remember. Uh, My dad was the kind of dad who would wind you up. He would say stuff like, um, this is when we were like 10. He once convinced me that the Cavalier that he had, um, when it went too fast, um, you could push a button and parachutes would come out the back to slow it down. <laughs> I was telling that to people at school. Yeah, I mean, that's not that's wrong. You shouldn't do that to kids. <laughs> no. What it was actually, the, the latch had gone on the boot and it just kept coming out yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just clothes flying out the back. Yeah, so um, uh, so you get picked up by your dad, which is lovely. Um, and uh, in a Renault Twelve, nice. Right? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, can't argue with any of that stuff. I mean, um, that's lovely. Uh, Scapper Sixteen, I've tried ages ago, I think. Um, and uh, yeah, 
I don't know if I've had a baked Alaska for a long time, though. That'd be the only thing. I'm Not an easy it. thing to make. You know, you can go badly wrong with it, and it starts to <laughs> yeah. look ropey when it comes out. And... I feel like I've tried one, but years ago. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's a combination of spot and cold. I like that. You know, the cold ice cream, the middle one, the, the meringue is just just warm and on the outside. Yeah. Bit of sponge, oh, yeah. bit of jam. No tomato there's sauce. A th- there's a theme here, Graham. It's got the savoury and the sweet. Yeah, yeah. hot and cold. Hot cold. Yeah. And that's where tomato oh. ketchup comes in because it's what was you cold and you're dipping a hot thing into it. Yes, it does hot and cold. You're right. Yeah. You've got the hot chips and the cold ketchup. Yeah, yeah. Because you always keep it in the fridge, even though they say you don't need you to. Don't, yeah. You do, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, that's but you cool. keep it in the fridge. That's got a question. Yeah. yeah, hot and cold does make a difference, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So, um, uh, quick survey thing for you. We're coming up to Christmas. I don't know if you've done this one. I, I'm I'm not some sort of stalker, so I haven't been and read all your old uh, posts. I've just seen the ones that popped up. So you can only have one day from Christmas. All the other days have been cancelled and removed forever. Do you keep Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, or Boxing Day? Oh, Christmas Eve. Right. I think it'll Mike? be downhill after that. I, lo- I, 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 I love cooking. I'm a, I, love, I love spending that day in the kitchen. I just get it already. Prepping, yeah. tippling away, yeah. yeah. And there's no, there's no pressure. Planning, yeah. I'm not one for presents, you know. I don't mind giving presents, but I'm not really fussed about opening, you know. I think it just goes downhill after that. Yeah. Boxing can do it. You you get a bit sluggish, I and think. Going boxing day, you're, of days. you're fed up with the people you're with. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Gen- fair enough. Generally, yeah. Oh. And if you do know Graham, you listen to this. He doesn't mean you. He means somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mike, what about you? Which one would you keep? I'm very torn between Christmas Eve and Boxing Day. Uh, just because Christmas Eve was always probably the best pub session. And yeah, Christmas Eve is the best pub session. I've got memories 100%. going back to my hometown after everyone's been wherever they've been all over the country and stuff. And then you come together, you go back to the old pub you used to haunt as a young teenager before you were legally allowed to drink and just catch up with everyone. And it was always just brilliant. But yeah. on the flip side, Boxing Day, you're so full. You're still like hungover pretty much a bit from Christmas Day itself. And then yeah. again, back home, I would always have a, a big breakfast with the family and then go and play rugby for one of the... My hometown's got two rugby clubs over the road from each other. And they're yeah. like playing different leagues, but Boxing Day, we play each other, and it, like you'd last about two minutes on the pitch, throw up, and then we'd have drinks and just like, roll in subs. It's just a mega day. So, oh, boxing rolling days. subs. Oh yeah, that's how you that's how you do Boxing Day rugby, rolling yeah. subs. And yes, yeah, so it's a toss up. I, I think Christmas Eve. <laughs> how long have you I, got in you? Three. I, thought I got about four minutes. I got about four Get ready. minutes before I throw up in my socks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm just going to carry this ball for a bit, and then I'll be just, back off. Yeah. Just to sleep on the flank of the scrum, just throwing up. Yeah. Oh. But yeah, yeah no, nice. I think for me, I, I, I'd agree. Christmas Eve, it's that, um, yeah, it's just got that happy buzz about it before the actual stress of Christmas Day. <laughs> yeah. How about you? I don't know. I feel like you can't enjoy the other two days without Christmas Eve. It's all about the build up. Mm. But at the same time, when it actually comes to it in reflection, my favorite day generally is Boxing Day, like cold cuts. It's the day when you can liberally hammer the cold yeah. meat, cheese, and the pork. It feels like you, this probably isn't the case now, but you're like, oh, I'm saving that port for by Boxing Day. If you you're you're free, you're on free port. It doesn't matter. You're not saving yeah. anything anymore. It's got it's got you're, to be gone. It's got to go. And yeah, you know, um, it's got to it's, it's got to go. So you're you by Boxing Day, you're just letting it all hang out. You usually go for a nice long walk. Do you, you have know? like a fry up? That that was like a I don't know if that's a Welsh thing. Like you used to have a fry up on potatoes Christmas Day, and cabbage and stuff. Giving like up that, of it now. It's just too much food. There was that year where we had, a, we in the lockdown, when uh, we couldn't visit people. Mm. <laughs> so we couldn't visit people, so we weren't going to make a roast because it was weird because we weren't with family or friends. It was just us on our own. Yeah. So that that year we chose to have a uh, cooked breakfast for Christmas dinner, didn't we? Like we had it with like champagne. <laughs> nice. Just, probably our ketchup as well, Graham, to be honest. Sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's changed his mind. <laughs> Look, it's, cold and, it's cold and hot, isn't it? I was just there going cold and hot. No, I mean... It's cold, cold and hot. <laughs> 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 oh dear me so big question for you um if you could change one thing about the world of whiskey because you've been in it for long enough what would you change is there anything you'd change if you could 
Uh, yeah, been around a long time. Uh, you've got a young face, though, so you hide it well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's the ketchup that does it. If you rub it on your face, it keeps you looking. It could be. I watched that doc- even they, when they show this documentary. Nightly moisturiser. You rub it on your face. When they show those documentaries about like people, that, the Centurion Club, they're always rubbing ketchup on their faces. Yeah, yeah. You drink that yeah. on urine and stuff. They're living in some remote part of the world, walking up hills, and they get their ketchup shipped over. Really? You know, Miracle. Love so, it. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what? It's entirely plausible. No, of course not. Current day and age. So, yeah, is there anything you would change about whiskey, if you could still? Uh, probably, uh, maybe this is controversial, but I would, I wouldn't, would I ban whiskey shows? Or I certainly... Oh, yeah, go for it, Graham. Love it. I don't love... We'll open up Room 101 for you. You can chuck whiskey shows in Room 101. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I don't see the point of them. <laughs> yeah. Especially the ones that are, you know, we did Whiskey Life Paris. The session yeah. is six hours long. Yeah. It's it's a complete marathon. It, it, and I'm on the other side, standing, listening to people, or talking to people yeah. and listening, seeing them deteriorate over the six hours. And yeah. There's not a lot of fun in that. But I'm thinking from the person on the other side, it, it, it can't be much fun drinking yeah. whiskey for six hours. It, 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 I, I would lose <laughs> interest. I, I think I, I would posit we've uh, discussed this a little bit before. I think the issue is there's just not enough chairs to sit down in. If they made chairs much more widely available, I, if we were doing whiskey shows, yes, I think we discussed this with mm. I discussed this with Ben. If you just chucked deck chairs everywhere, people wouldn't go around and hustle much. They'd get a dram and they'd go and sit down. But they'd also they'd be asleep a, everywhere. But also, I feel like for that to work, when you go up to a stand, if you try something, let's say you really want to get a no whiskey, right? You don't want to go around and try loads of whiskeys. You go and try, you've tried five and you found one you really like, but you, you haven't, 10, 15 mils isn't enough to decide to buy a bottle. You should be going to be able to say, look, do you know what? I'm really like this, but can I try a bit more? I'm going to go and just sit over there with it and I'm really going to see if I want to buy a bottle. Because when you're trying to make a decision of like 10, 15 mils, you, you're not really getting enough of the whiskey to really make a full decision. I feel like I this is your so. way of just creating a way in which you can sit down in a deck chair and yeah, drink Tamdu 18 100%. at whiskey yeah. shows. Yeah, just and, and I go up to Tamdu and they're like, "Can I Tamdu 18, you're going to be at Kendall. I'm just saying I want 50 yeah. mil. I've already had a bottle. I bought it with my money, but I can't remember what it tastes like. I need to be reminded. <laughs> and then I might buy another bottle. <laughs> so, so, Graham, you would you would potentially get rid of whiskey shows. I, yeah, I just think the format is not the best. How would you change it? whiskey. Would you change the format or just can them all together? Do do you enjoy tastings where you get three or four whiskies, nice whiskies, decent decent quantities? You go through them, you drink them all, and then you go off for a couple of pints. That that's my so idea. You do like speed dating. It'd be like yeah. whis- it'd be like whiskey yeah. speed dating. But this- you're all there. It is like instead of like a, you know fifty distilleries, you'd have maybe like ten. Mm. Yes, people would come round. You'd have a wee out, a couple of drams, one you know. Du, 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 and then yeah, off. And, and, you know I, I could be sitting on a deck chair with a few decks yeah. around me and you can come and sit with me if you like or or not yeah. as the case may be yeah. so you also want to sit down this isn't just a me thing yeah, yeah me actually <laughs> just get on to the other side of the fence what yeah. we've established is that you two just want to sit you don't want to go to whiskey shows because you just want to sit down yeah. well I mean, <laughs> it's a long time to stand up for isn't it i think yeah. i love it oh, that's yeah. that's brilliant i like that i think there's something yeah. in that and, and when you're at home you you don't you don't walk around your house standing up drinking your whiskey. You sit down and you enjoy it. Yeah. I just think as you say, the ten and fifteen mils into a glass which is already wet and grubby and you can hardly see through the glass by the end of the you know. Yeah. There should at least be glass yeah. washing facilities to get the glass back there, but a yeah a lipstick off it, if nothing else, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I, I, just a side note for me, I have to stop wearing lipstick to whiskey festivals. It's, yeah. uh, <laughs> no, I know what you mean, though. Like, the glasses obviously do get quite a hammering, don't they? Yeah. They do. Well, yeah. yeah. And if you leave any and, left, and you're, and you're, and you're, you get that moment, and then you're, like, rushing to finish off your sample, and then you're rinsing your glass, and you're trying to find something to rinse it, and then, it's, you know, it's not... You wouldn't do it at home, so I get what you're saying. You wouldn't at home tolerate uh, that just barely rinsed out glass probably maybe still has some other whiskey residue in it you'd be having a nice fresh clean glass so you can really enjoy usually the single malt right yeah so So it's different i think it's more about smaller drams or smaller selection of drams dedicated like 
one dram maybe per distillery. Bigger serving, chairs, chill out, have a talk about the whiskey, yeah. talk to each other. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Mainly sitting down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> leather chair leather arm chairs yeah nice. uh, so you're also famous for wearing shorts so we would um we must talk about this before we forget um you know you, you do you know if you wear shorts do you wear shorts every day of the year is it any days where you resort to trousers i pretty much wear shorts every every day of the year in ireland in scotland i wouldn't have been quite so gung-ho about it given the, the temperature difference um there are times when i you know possibly if i've got the uh, vip visitors coming that i will put on trousers but everybody at work I thought you were going to say a smart pair of shorts yeah <laughs> well that's my, that's my first go-to <laughs> put on some brogues with my shorts yeah. yeah you can wear brogues and shorts that's trendy I've, now no yeah, socks i've done that before yeah yeah that's uh, fine but but People at work tend to get a bit worried if they see them in trousers. They think somebody's died or something. <laughs> it's, you know, or, You're like, or they're it's like that. Dead. It's like that. Right? It's like that. Um, I was listening to the, uh, one of the Chelsea ex Chelsea players talk about when they were at training and stuff, and they and they'd see uh, Roman Bromovich's helicopter fly over the training ground, and they'd know the oh. manager was going to get sacked. Yeah. It's like your staff. Your staff are there. Graham comes in in trousers. Like, yeah, yeah, that's it. Something serious I'm is going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so. So yeah, yeah, no, I find it, and I think if you persevere with shorts, the more comfortable you feel in them, and the less comfortable you feel in in long pants. Yeah. yeah, I tried to look up some facts about shorts to hit you with, but there really isn't many other than the facts, other than when they were sort of originated from. I tried to look up to see uh, which countries around the world uh, wear shorts the most. Couldn't find that out. Bermuda. So. <laughs> I would also say like there's a gap in the market for a, sh- a shorts based fact book. Yeah. But Ooh. one thing you should never do is force your child to wear shorts to school beyond <laughs> the point that every other child wears them. Because that poor child that has to wear them and nobody yeah. else wearing <laughs> that's not on. So is it? Are you speaking from experience here? Or no, I went to school with somebody who who was forced to wear shorts at least one or two all years the time longer than everybody else did. Right, and it, it, it probably damaged them for life. I'd say. Yeah, I remember having a flash. Strange, I've just got really. a flashback to school now, where I forgot my. It was plain clothes day, and I came in uniform, and everyone else was in their own clothes. So I had to get like tight shorts and an ET t-shirt out of the lost property bin, and I was just like, "Oh, it's just one of the worst memories of my life." Because someone came in, and uh, it was like a celebrity, and they took photos of everyone with this person. And I'm in this like <laughs> charity outfit, basically. That reminds like, me. Ah. Of, yeah. There were people at school that the only time you went to get lost property or had to wear that stuff was either when you wet yourself or had diarrhea. <laughs> I mean, it might have been that, and I'm just shielding the memories, but yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> That's a hundred percent what it was like, and then your in your mind, you've completely changed it. But yeah. it was one of those two. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it's close though. I got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> everyone. I don't know if most people. It feels like a rite of passage to be at that point where you've gone in, you've forgotten your PE kit, and you're forced to pick it out PE kit from the the box of doom, and it's just pot luck as to what you're going to get. Yeah, just the whole yeah. thing. Like the box yeah. stinks of pee. It just it's yeah. just grotty. Yeah. Like, so, back on a whiskey note, are you sniffing that Paolo Cotardo Springbank now? I am, yes. Go on then. Right, great. So I can tell that Graham's not as bothered about this part as I am. Uh, no, Graham doesn't no, I... strike me as the kind of guy that's going to be out there uh, desperately chasing Springbank, like 98% of the rest of the whiskey population. But, Mike, go on. How good is it then? All bad? So pan it. I, I was just putting some nose notes down. It's literally, it's got this like, you know when you cut oak and it's got that like sawdusty oak smell? It's got that. Strawberries, ginger. I don't know if you've ever made salt dough. Don't know if you have, mm. but it's kind of got that smell in there, and then uh, like scones and jam on the nose. Is this just the nose? Just the nose. Have you tried it yet? What's it? I'm going in now, mate. I'm going oh, here you now. go. Let me just see. Yeah. Is there any tomato ketchup in there? Surely. <laughs> the power of suggestion, right? It's got HP. It's got Hellman's. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's all the sauces. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, Worcestershire sauce, hot and cold. Pretty much the same. Quite dry. Stringent, but still sweet notes in there. Mm. Um, ginger, 
You getting any dunnaginess on it? Mm-mm. Not jumping no. out. Is that whilst you're doing your swelling around your mouth, Graham? Is that something you've ever considered for? I don't know how how you deal with car car storage, but people are very fond of. In fact, actually, whiskey question. People are obsessed now with these traditional processes of making whiskey. And I have to be honest, I'm not sure what the process is that you guys implement around Dingle. Mm-hmm. But do you do you bring use any of these, you know, traditional processes or is it modern? What's the what's the crack with uh more by fault default we are mashed up as a wooden mash down, so it's basically just a big wooden tub. Right. So it it, it it's not very efficient. So where that pushes us back is into mashing it, well, fermenting our, our, our wash, our beer, is probably alcohol strength that were more uh, seen in the 1980s, 1990s. So we're, we're, we're kind of going backwards that way. Uh, yeah. And that, 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 that will have, have an impact. Um, our warehousing, no, we're... we're with a bit of mixture of racked and just like this to these tool racks stacked uh, up type thing. Yeah, and palletized as well. Yeah. Uh, so on that side we're we're fairly uh, fairly modern. But uh, have you ever yeah. wanted to sneak off sneak off a couple of casks and just leave them somewhere really like random? Like We've, we've, you know, the, yeah, we've, we've, there's an island where they can't be obviously where they can't be stolen. I yeah, mean, it'd be nice. There's an I'm island not... off the off Dingle, off the peninsula, the Blasket Island, yeah. and I'd, I'd love to stick a cask out there and you know in a shed, which is just open to the elements, It'd get blast yeah. from left, right, center. You'd have to be able to go and check it regularly, wouldn't you? Obviously, yeah, yeah. You but... need to get revenue to agree to it as well. But yeah, mm. I'm sure the impact of of just strong winds over a cask must must make yeah. a difference airflow must is probably something we've never nobody really dabbled in you know yeah uh most just feels like a, a lot of people i mean great flavor profile in dingle whiskey it feels like a lot of people often are chasing that sort of that x factor you know like that coastal nurse or the the sort of you know mustiness that you get sometimes that will come through and it's just where you store the casks really isn't it so yeah you know but it's interesting things come go and come around as well because i was, I was reading something today about um you know heating stills from using hydrogen and going down that route you're going back to almost recreating direct fired stills again and right, you've got okay. to think that the direct fire had to have a big difference compared to having a little or having a steam coil inside boiling away if you're blasting mm. heat at the bottom of still your 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 cooking reactions are, in your wash still are going to be completely different mm. so that would be interesting to see if we can yeah. recreate that because but you know even in my, in my early days at going uh we were direct fired with with gas and even coal we ran coal for a while so right. uh, it'd be nice to, to to see some of that come back but in a very modern and efficient way and like really dumb question for me, like so. Apologies on this, but do you consider the way the whiskey's made? I know the whiskey's in Ireland, but do you consider the whiskey to be more Irish in profile or more Scottish in profile, or literally one foot in both? It's a bit, a bit of everything. Yeah. Like, look, whiskey really, when it comes down to it, yes, we are triple distilling, but not all triple distilled whiskies are the same, and not all double distilled. You know, you you do have some triple distilled setups and I think we are following that camp where mm. we create something that is more towards a double distilled character. Uh, right. where the stills are, are, are relatively small and uh, you know not tall necked. Um so yeah I think you can be somewhere in between you you, you could be a mortlick of a swirl the two point eight one distilled it's that kind of <laughs> yeah, that kind okay. thing, you know that and yeah. you'll see lots of differences uh, coming through in the next five years with the mm. the new younger distilleries kind of, uh, producing possibly double possibly triple but also you've got the single pot still mm. well in single malt so you, so you can you can do a lot more uh, different things i suppose in ireland fairly more straightforwardly than you can in scotland yeah because of swa right yeah and just just yeah you've got, well, you've got single pot still which opens up a whole 
yeah. different, you know, different ingredients, and it's going to open up again. So, so that in itself, mm. if, if your starting ingredients are completely different, then you, you you will create a different different spirit. Yeah. Um. um uh, okay. I mean, we, we were. We've, I've been putting together a list of um, like how to pronounce stuff. You know, probably just as much as anything to, to, <laughs> to so people know we've at least paid some attention to how to pronounce things correctly. And I was just, I was really rem reminded of how many new distilleries have popped up in the last sort of ten-ish years in Scotland, because it was first off, it was a list of how to pronounce Scottish distilleries correctly, and. Um, uh, to sort of you know one list that people can refer to rather than having to watch like 30 second videos yeah. <laughs> or whatever people would do uh, so it's trying to make it easier for people especially people who um, you know uh, yeah just one list they can save but I was going down it there's so many that have popped up and I was like I know that one but I didn't know that one yeah. I've heard of that one oh that one crazy and it's the same in Ireland right there's so many popping up so it's going to be congested marketplace really in the next sort of 10 years I think Oh, definitely, yeah. I think there will have to be some rationalisation. Unfortunately, I don't think everybody will survive in, in the format that they're in. You know, it's, it's it's one time finding money to set up a distillery and get the first two or three years under your belt. It's it's another thing to go that next stage to to start selling and then reinvest. And, and I've, I've got to say as well, like everyone starts off a distillery and promotes how good young people young spirit and young cask gay spirit can be but those same distilleries in 10 years are going to be leveraging the age of their spirit yeah. to kick down the new distilleries and say you're only three or four years old and we've got 10 year age stuff coming out all the time now <laughs> so it's it's going to be there's going to be even more choice in the sort of 10 plus year bracket in another five years and those distilleries are going to be putting more pressure on the younger distilleries so there has to be a point where it becomes maybe too much i think unsustainable yeah. but the positive i'm sure there's going to be loads of stills and stuff you can buy from companies that are folded so, <laughs> or yeah, the other way around everyone might have been so educated into the fact that young 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 whiskies actually can be brilliant uh that it might i don't know it could go the other way is there enough to what go around you, what, what's your purchases? what's your thoughts on the what's your thoughts in on the uh on that paulo Catada spring man then for people that should people crawl over broken glass to try and get a bottle or just no. settle for what's in their cupboard? <laughs> settle what's in your cupboard, but if you can get one, get one. So yeah. palette, uh, sugar, ginger cubes, raisins, raspberries, strawberries. It is really dry and super astringent. Um, and then I wouldn't say it's a Christmas dram. It's kind of definitely no. not really there for me. It's still got the Campbelltown funk, but... Even with a Paolo in it? No? Yeah, no, no, not massively. It all mm. sits on the sweeter side for me, but it does then dive. The finish is all salinity and coastal notes. And then when you go back in, those are more prevalent at the start of the tasting notes. It kind of balances out quite well. So it's a salty, sweet dram. So might be perfect for you. Throw, yeah, some, uh, throw some tomato sauce in there. Graham's on it as well. <laughs> yeah, Graham's on it too. <laughs> <laughs> Take away the oh, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. Um, uh, uh, that sounds good, Mike. Sounds, uh, sounds all right. But, but, I have to be honest. You're not. You're not doing jumping up and down about it. So maybe it's just the first pour. You know. But it, it is. Just, it's a, what was it? Hundred quid? No, I don't think it was Could even it, that. I think it was like ninety or even less than that. I think I can't remember. Eighty nine. Ten year old, fifty five percent. There's loads of whiskies out there, and Scotia is going to be doing something just the same or taste just as well. So if you can get it, try it. It's good. It's different. It. Something else, but it's not amazing. And there's. As always with Springbank, the stuff that's just as good for more available, probably cheaper. So yeah. yeah. So if you if you, but the thing is, we haven't you haven't tried many Paolo Campbelltown whiskies, have you? No. No, no, no. no. I've been trying to get one, uh, a sample of the Scotia Mermaid, but alas, I wait. My my battle continues to. But I saw loads swim of. On. I did see loads swim of people. Swim on, Mike. Swim on. I saw loads of people getting free bottles this week, so that really did annoy me. So I've, yeah, I've, I've sent a <laughs> furious email uh, email to the marketing company. I went, hang on, I asked you for a sample. You're sending out bottles to people, so right. yeah, watch this space. Yeah. <laughs> you see what happens. Yeah. What, what's your What's your favourite sherry cask thing, Graham? Out of all of them, do you have a favourite? Uh, no, but you're. I know you said I said bourbon cask was your favourite. Yeah, bourbon. you mentioned Paulo Cortado there. That's you know it's quite a new boy on the block. Really, has become fairly mm. trendy in the in the last super trendy couple of years, two three years. Uh, it seems to work. It seems to work pretty well. If you, if you don't want something 
as intense as Oliver Rosso and maybe not quite so sweet as, as Pedro Jimenez. I think just Sherry can mm. have a sweet spot and I'd be again bringing back my my bourbon cask liking. I I, I like to combine bourbon and sherry casks together, and I think yeah. they bring the best out of each other. Then, yeah, I mean that's very glamour Glen Murray, isn't it? Really, yeah, yeah. Bourbon casks mixed with sherry casks together, getting the getting the mix right. Yeah, that's uh, uh, you know, that that was pretty much for the the fifteen sixteen year old. <laughs> Hello. 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 Based on so <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, you know, like, got a viewer behind you. <laughs> I know. Face popped in. Yeah. Is is he? Have you found his slippers? <laughs> I don't wear slippers. <laughs> he's, bringing, he's bringing the red fruit and supper with the <laughs> the ketchup. Yeah, yeah. He just wa- he just wanders around the house in shorts and used ketchup bottles, which he's fashioned into slippers. Yeah. <laughs> it's, so it's been a really pleasure to have you on with us today, Graham. Is there anything else that you want to share about Dingle for for listeners before um, we uh, we part ways? Uh, no, not particularly. No, no. As I said, we'll have a few more releases next year uh, yeah. in the Wheel of the Year series, and then beyond that, uh, we'll, we'll get into. Big boy whiskey with age statements probably the year after a mm. little bit, but you know I wouldn't get too hung up on age statements particularly. It's um, it's nice to get to a certain milestone, but um, you, know, there's, you can create good whiskeys. Doesn't matter if they're nine years, eleven years. Yeah, they don't yeah. hit that magic ten, twelve, fifteen. So. You do me a promise. It if you if you do do a Paolo cask, Paolo Cotardo cask, just call it like. Shoreditch by Dingle, or, yeah. or 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 carefully balanced beanie hat on your head by Dingle, yeah. or something like that. <laughs> East East London Reserve. Red red trousers by Dingle. I've got a Paolo Cortado finish working away, but it'll probably be twenty fifteen oh, yeah. before I'll really start. Twenty twenty five. Twenty twenty five. Twenty fifteen. Yeah, twenty fifteen. Yeah. Because he's been in there since he's, fifteen. We're gonna have to go. We're gonna have to go the whole way around the calendar again. We're going back yeah. to the future here. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I know we jump all over the place, but thanks so much for coming on today. Um, yeah, it's been we brilliant. really appreciate it. Yeah. It's been great. And, um, great to see you both in the flesh. Yeah. 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 We appreciate you giving up your Monday evening yeah. to come on the pod. Well, yeah. It's been good. Brilliant. So, yeah, for those listening, obviously, uh, follow along. We'll put all the information in the episode below um, and we will catch you on the next one. Bye bye bye. <laughs>